Kia ora and welcome to the second of three Talking Dairy Summer Yarns, where we're revisiting our most popular episodes. This moment is from the most downloaded episode in 2024, episode 84, New Milking Frequency Trends and the Impact of Once-A-Day Milking in Early Lactation. In this episode, Dr. Paul Edwards, who's a Dairy NZ senior scientist, and Kent Weston Arnold, who is the Northwest Waikato Area Manager for Dairy NZ, bring some fresh insights into emerging milking frequency trends and the factors that are shaping them. They talk about what's driving the adoption of once a day milking in early lactation and discuss why more farmers are giving it a go. What's the difference between regions? And what are the most common reasons farmers are shifting to once a day during those early weeks in the season? You'll also hear how it impacts operations and what you need to know before trying once a day or flexible milking yourself. From your perspective, Paul, what factors are driving the adoption of once a day milking in that early lactation and across the season? I guess there's a whole host of different reasons people might be interested in different milking frequencies. Typically, they relate to animal-related things. So, for example, body condition score, looking to improve that. Uh, It could be feed-related things, for example, low pasture covers, or people-related things. So, really taking the pressure off at a a busy time of the year, particularly calving and, and that mating period in spring. It's a stressful time on farm. And so, I guess... Whatever your driver is there, the combination of those things will, will, I guess, influence what option might be best suited to an individual farm. Okay, so Paul, you've talked about it at a national level, what you could see in the Fonterra VAT data. What did you see as differences between the regions? There's definitely considerable regional variation in the use of different milking frequencies from kind of one end of the spectrum where in Northland in the last season, over 40% of herds were full season once a day. The rest of the North Island, relatively speaking, was quite similar, but with about 40 to 50% being full season twice a day. But there's definitely some regional nuances there. The top of the South Island, so Tasman Marlborough, Very diverse use of different milking frequencies up there and actually the lowest use of full season twice a day. So only 15% of farms using full season twice a day, which is even lower than Northland. And then the lower South Island, so Canterbury, Otago, Southland, doing relatively similar things there with significant use of flexible milking approaches like milking three times in two days, 10 and seven, things like that. Over 40% of herds there using one of those alternative milking frequencies during the season with a similar use of full season twice a day to those North Island regions. Similar switch points, reasonably consistent that about that 40 to 50% of the way through the season is when people start doing different things. The really interesting one that this is the first time we've been able to look at that is the considerable use of early lactation once a day milking in Canterbury, Otago, Southland, where about 20 to 30% of herds are using once a day milking in early season. And is that a new trend? Yeah, it's definitely increasing, but we've only had this kind of rich picture for about the last three seasons. So it's hard to discern a trend over that sort of short period of time. And I guess if I almost spill the beans a little bit in terms of giving a summary of what once a day in particular, what effect that might have on those kind of three categories, just at a very high level, I guess we do see that once a day improves energy balance. And that because of that, it can have an impact on body condition score and reproductive performance, but that is highly dependent on the length of time that once a day period is used for. And that likely there is some substitution there where that to have got that increased body condition score, there is a trade-off with milk solids. But again, the extent of that is dependent on how it's being used. From that feed perspective, once a day doesn't conserve feed, but it does mitigate negative energy balance. So there is a positive side to that story. And then from a people perspective, I guess we do see that it, it does free up people's time and increases flexibility. So for example, during spring, you could actually be milking your cows in the afternoon, which leaves you sort of free to do all of your calving related tasks in the morning and take that pressure out of getting everything done kind of in that morning period. And there's some evidence out there about the effect it might have on sleep. And so, you know, being able to reduce stress and and fatigue over that period, there really should be benefits there from a kind of people perspective, which then could play out in terms of actually helping out farm performance as well, depending on how it's being used on farm. 
Now to you, Kent. Uh, there's a pocket of farmers in the Waikato that have been milking once a day in early lactation for many years. So you've had a chat with a few farmers who've implemented once a day milking already this season in early lactation. What have been some of the most common reasons they've given you for why they decided to try once a day in early lactation? In terms of trying it, there was quite diverse reasons. One, it was he was looking for a solution to try and improve mating performance. Another was a farmer with a contract milker on board, basically a one-man operation, milking 250 cows. So he was looking to take pressure off the one guy who was doing everything and just make his life a little bit easier in that early stage when things are under pressure. One of the other farmers, they went on to once a day because they'd had a death in the family at that time and they were having a lot of relief staff and and were wanting to take pressure off through that period and it worked so well that they decided to really kick on with it because they could see the range of other benefits that came from it. Can you give us some specific examples of how milking once a day in early lactation impacted their operations? So, for example, the farmer that was looking to improve his mating, he actually got a registered body condition scorer in that season to get a gauge on how much body condition they lost immediately after calving. He believes that they halved their condition score loss. They used less cedars that first year. They had a better three-week submission rate, reduced empty rate. And one of the things that really surprised him was that they actually had an improved cell count, which may seem counterintuitive, but he puts it down to less stress on the animals, less walking, more relaxed. And then on top of that came the people benefits. So... All the farmers I talk to are operating on 24-hour grazing. So less time putting up fences, less time for the cows walking to and from the sheds. That particular farm that was looking to improve his mating, they had a a walk of over 3Ks at times, and, and that really took pressure off the herd during that early lactation. Now, Kent, you mentioned yesterday one of the farmers you spoke to had tried it this season and wasn't sure that it suited them. Tell us more about that. I know one farmer that gave it a crack last season. The most obvious negative of going once a day in early lactation is that there is going to be a compromise in milk production. And he found he, in that early lactation period, he felt he'd dropped about 1,500 kilos of solids over that month. And With any changes to your farm system, it's all about what's going to work for you and what's going to fit for your farm, your business, your people, your goals and aspirations. And for him, potential long-term benefits in terms of body condition score and later lactation and mating results didn't outweigh that 1,500 kilos of solids. So this year, he went back on to twice a day as soon as the milk was at the stirrer. Thank you, Kent. So, Paul, you would know more about the science of once-a-day milking and the influence on milk production in the short and long term. What should farmers be aware of? The easiest way to answer that is to look back at a couple of experiments that have have investigated that question. We'll talk about three. The first one was a study done in 2009-10 at Darren Z's Live Farm in Newstead. And this one had a comparison between twice a day for that period or either three or six weeks of once-a-day milking. As important context for this particular study, that there was no feed restriction. These cows were being fed generously, leaving 1,800 kilo residuals. They were getting some supplement in the shed. So this is, I guess, a bit of a kind of worst-case scenario in terms of what production loss could be expected. If we look at what the results of that one were, so they all lost a similar rate of body condition score at the start, but by six weeks after calving, cows that had been milked once a day, whether it be three or six weeks, had a greater body condition score. And interestingly, that was carried through the majority of the season, although they did actually end up drying off at similar body condition score. In terms of that milk production, for three weeks of once a day, there was a 7% decrease in the annual milk solids. Uh, And for six weeks, the number was 12%. But I guess it's important to keep in mind how you go and apply those things. So in this experiment, each cow was managed individually and every cow had either three or six weeks, which 
maybe becoming more common with automatic drafting systems and herd management systems that you could apply that level of management. But for the most part, people choose to milk once a day based on you know three weeks from the planned start of calving. And of course, that means that actually the majority of the cows end up experiencing a lot less than three weeks of once a day, if, if you're using that as an example. Um, and so they used these experimental results and modelled what that approach might do. And so they concluded that for three weeks of once a day from the planned start of calving, there'd be a about a 1% to 2% decrease in the annual milk solids, and that number was 3 to 5% when using once a day for a period of six weeks. So there was a, another study done in Ireland in the 2018 period at Chagas and Moorpark, um, and so they had four different treatments, a twice-a-day one and then a once-a-day for either four, six, or eight weeks. And this experiment was run actually as two milking groups, so those animals were in the once-a-day group for their set length of period, and then they moved over into the twice a day group and then they were followed through the whole season. Some kind of key results from there, they measured no significant difference in body condition score, but the once a day cows were about 20 kilos heavier than the twice a day group and that again carried through the majority of the season. However, there wasn't actually a lot of difference between the length of use of once a day, so that 20 kilos was pretty consistent whether there'd been four, six or eight weeks of once a day. In terms of production, looking at the annual milk solids, there was a 0.8% decrease per week of milking once a day. So by milking the animals for one week of once a day, you could expect a 0.8% decrease on your, your annual milk solids. That If you were doing two weeks, there would be a 1.6% decrease and so on and so on. Thanks for tuning into this summer yarn from Talking Dairy. We've linked to the full episode in the show notes if you want to hear more. Make sure to hit follow so you can keep up with our latest podcasts. You can also keep up with Dairy and Z News on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn, or go to our website and sign up for our fortnightly Dairy and Z News emails. As always, if you have any feedback on this podcast or have some ideas for future topics or guests to have on the show, please email us at talkingdairy at dairynz.co.nz. Matiwa, catch you next time.